Hello and welcome to my deck tech. This deck is called X plus one equals Hydras. It's my pet deck. It's one that I have tuned over several, several months, if not longer, trying to find a version that works really well and is powerful and fun. And I think I've got a really good version now. Uh, I can go through everything here and show you what cards I put in. I'm excited to dig into it. So let's get going. All right, so let's take a look at the commander first. This is Zaxara the Exemplary, which is a commander that was in one of the, the C20 pre-cons. So really cool, fun card. It's a Hydra, Nightmare Hydra specifically. So yeah, this is not very fun to play against um, if, you, if you don't have the right counters. It's a pretty awesome deck. So it costs four total mana value, one black, green, and blue. And it has Death Touch, so that you can add two mana of any one color if you tap it. It's a 2-3 normally. But this is the important part, this bottom text here that says, Whenever you cast a spell with X in its mana cost, create a 0-0 green Hydra creature token. Then put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So I'm not, I'm not going to go over the, the rule text on every card, but this one's very important so you can understand the point of the deck and how I built this deck. There are a lot of ways to build it, and there's some variations even if you build a deck very, with, in a very similar mindset. Um, and so I'm just going to go over the ones that, um, that I have, the cards that I had in my collection, and a couple that I acquired along the way to make this what I feel like is a pretty powerful deck. Um, overall, the, the budget uh, for this deck, it's... It, came in the value is between $400-$450 um, in terms of what the cards are currently worth but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have a very powerful version that's significantly less maybe even half the cost I mean there's several cards in here that are very expensive cards take a couple of those out and you still have a really powerful deck and it's not going to cost quite as much as well so a lot of ways to do this a lot of budget ways to do this but with anything I would recommend build your decks with what you have on hand and then just kind of go from there and, and fill in pieces as you go that's what I've done with this deck and I have it in a pretty good spot right now. I don't think it's complete. It never is. No deck ever is complete. There's always new cards coming out that you can add to it and change and you get a new idea or adjust it somehow. But here's my deck currently as it stands. Um, I'll put a link in the description too uh, so you can see my deck list. And if I have updated it since this video, you'll see any changes that are on there because that's a, a live list that I keep updated as I, as I go. All right, so let's talk about how the card works. Um, the most important part down here is this bottom part of the text, which it basically means it cares about X spells, right? So I end up wanting to cast, you know, a, a, a spell that has an X in it more often than not. When trying to figure out what cards to cut and what cards to include in here, if you, uh, if I wasn't sure, I was kind of stuck between them. I used whether or not it had an X in the in the mana value as a determining factor. If it did, it was a lot more likely to stay in the deck because that's synergy with the commander. It's really powerful. Every time you do that, if the commander's on the battlefield you get a zero zero green hide a creature token and then you put those plus that many plus one plus one counters on it and this deck has fun ways to increase the number of those counters increase the value of what x is it gets crazy really quickly and the whole idea is you know with a hydra you have so many heads that just keep spawning out of it and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and i've got definitely a lot of really big hydras in the deck too that do some fun things and a couple other creatures that aren't necessarily x spells but are in there for a very specific purpose all right, so let's get into the, the creatures and we'll see what we have here. All right, first up, we've got Cryptic Trilobite, which is an XX spell. So if X were to equal one, then I would have to pay two total mana and uh, it would enter with that many plus one counters on it. There's you know some ramp in here. I can tap it to put more on it. So again, good synergy. That's, um, that's just how this one goes. Same with Endless One, that's an X spell for an Eldrazi. It can be as big or as small as I need it to be. This is great in early game to get either of these cards because you can put them you know, as, as big as you want or as big as you're able to. And if you get it late game, it can get really massive. And just remember, you know, let's say I, I make this a, uh, maybe I have five mana that I can play with. I If I have Zexara out on the battlefield, let me just set that up there. If I have Zexara out on the battlefield and I uh, play Endless One for five, X equals five, and I'm getting not only a 5-5 from Endless One, but I'm also getting a 5-5 Hydra from, from Zaxara. So really awesome there. A lot of fun, fun doubling up and synergies, and it gets crazy really quickly. Um, Hangerback Walker, another XX. I love this card because no matter how many X, uh, how many plus one, plus one counters are on it, 
If it dies, you get to make a 1-1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying for each plus one counter that was on it. And you can tap it and add more as you go. I have other ways to add counters to things. Uh, so it gets really fun. It's just think of it like this giant walker that has all these little Thopters inside and like a loading bay ready to just fly out as soon as the walker goes down. You think you've defeated it, but nope, just kidding. Now you got to deal with all these flying creatures too. So it gets pretty fun. I, lo I love this card. This is one of my favorite cards in all of Magic, actually. It's a great card and it does work in this deck pretty well too. Capricopian, X and a green for a Goat Hydra. This one has a really fun feature in that you can put a plus one plus one counter on it and then reselect which player Capricopian is attacking, but only the player that Capricopian is attacking may activate this ability and only during the declare attacker step. So if I'm playing like a four, four person commander game and I swing out at someone else and they say, you know what, I don't want to take that damage, I'm actually going to pay two myself make it bigger, but make it swing at my opponent instead. You can you can choose who it swings at, and then it benefits me because this thing gets bigger, which is great. And it benefits you know, me also because it's hitting any one of my opponents. I may or may not care which opponent it hits, but at least it's you know it's becoming bigger in the process. So really fun effect on that card. Plus, again, Hydra. You get a Hydra when you cast it with that X in there. Speaking of, Hungering Hydra, another one. Um, can't be blocked by more than one creature, which is nice. And whenever it's dealt damage, you put that many plus one counters on it, which just gets it bigger and bigger and bigger, unless it's dealt enough damage to kill it all at once. So if this thing is big enough, and let's say it's like a 7-7 seven, seven, and someone deals four damage to it, instead of it going down to, you know, just three for, you know, three uh, toughness left for that turn, it'll actually go up by four in terms of toughness and power, permanently because they're counters. This is a pretty cool card. The only way that someone can avoid that is if they can just straight up kill it, which is, you know, of course there are ways to do that, but it's a threat that has to be dealt with essentially, which makes it really fun. All right, now this is the first card in the deck that has no X in the cost. This is Servant of the Scale. It is in here because it does have plus one counter synergy, and when it dies, I can put however many uh, target uh, counters on a target creature where x is the number of plus one counters on servant of the scale i didn't say that exactly correctly but you can word it you can see the wording on there this is in here because of another card which we'll see in a little bit which is a spoiler alert the ozolith uh, it works really well with this uh, it just can just double up counters when something dies and you get extra value for it so there's a lot of ways to keep yourself alive in this deck even if a creature gets destroyed that's what you know this deck is all about we're trying to trying to find ways to still get value on something and plus it's only a one green so i'm not going to get a hydra off Zexara. but if i get this first uh, that's fine too because it's already going to start the synergy train rolling with the plus one counters so i would say plus one counters are probably the secondary theme in this deck besides the the uh, the x spells another one which has plus one counter synergy which is swarm shambler get the full or extended art version here uh, it enters the battlefield with a plus one counter on it. I think I got this from a collector booster, if I recall correctly. And whenever a creature with a plus one counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, you get a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. And that applies for all of your creatures that have plus one counters on it. So this is going to protect a lot of my other creatures too, or not maybe not necessarily protect them, but it's going to at least give me some value if they do get targeted by something, which is important. Runs Run Hydra. Hydra is a new Modern Horizons 2 card, X and a 1, with Reach, which occasionally there are issues where um, I can't deal with flyers in this deck if I don't have the right kinds of creatures out, so this is in here to help me with that. This is one of the creatures that will help me deal with flyers if there are any. Um, and then you can also reinforce this if, if I have enough creatures on the battlefield and I just want to make something bigger, or maybe give a creature plus one counters that doesn't yet have it on it because I'm looking for that synergy, then I can use the reinforce ability to discard this card and put plus one counters on a creature instead of just casting this. Genesis Hydra is another one. And it's uh, this one can help you out if you're stuck and you're looking for a card. You get a little bit of a tutor effect there. So you reveal the top X cards of your library and you can put a non-land permanent card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. And then it does enter with however many plus one counters based on X. And then you're also getting that Hydra from Zexara, if you're if you're casting it when that's on the battlefield. Hooded Hydra, Snake Hydra enters with X plus one counters, and when it dies, you get a snake creature token for each plus one counter on it. It does have a morph ability. I almost rarely will, will be using that because I'm looking for the X synergy instead. Um, so, pretty cool card overall. 
works with this energy and skyrider elf which does have flying so again to, to mention from a few cards ago that helps it has converge so skyrider elf enters the battlefield with a plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it now this is a three color deck but that doesn't mean i don't have ways to get access to more colors than that i could potentially have access to all five of them my X would be bigger. You can overpay for this creature if you want to. X doesn't have to equal one because I just have three colors of mana. X could equal three. I could have uh, a red source, a white source, and a black source for X, then my green and blue. So technically I could pay five for this, and then it's going to enter with three plus one counters on it, but then I'm also going to get a three, three Hydra from Zexara. Zexara is one of the ways that I can get access to mana from colors that are not in my commander identity, which can be important, especially in a situation like this, because it says add one mana of any color, not just any color of my commander identity. So I could add a red or a white mana source in there, plus the, the lands that are in my deck that align with the, the color identity of my commander. So a couple fun ways to get around that and get some extra benefits from that convergibility. Vastwood Hydra enters with plus one counters as we know and when it dies i can distribute plus one counters on another creature or any number of creatures i control which again can get really nasty really quick if you've got something that doubles up the, the you know, number of counters that are being placed on something or you know like the ozolith which you'll see in a little bit that can kind of hold counters and then put them back on something afterwards so pretty powerful verizal the split current this one isn't necessarily the best creature in terms of synergy, other than the fact that it's an X spell, it's in the right color, um, and it's it's a pre-release card that I got, which is kind of fun, so I can throw that little nice, you know, bling effect in here. It does have uh, a kicked, some kicked synergy, um, doesn't really apply too much in this deck at all. I, I, I may still have one kick spell I've, I've changed so much over the, over the time but uh, I, I know I did just cut one of my cards that had kicker in it um, so I don't you know there's probably not going to be that much synergy most of the time I'm just playing this for the x value to get a second hydra to get double bodies essentially when you have an x spell creature you're going to get two creatures every time when you have zexara out on the field so it's really really fun to just see your board explode with hydras when you've got him out there it gets pretty crazy pretty quick voracious hydra um, you get some choices here. It does have Trample, which can be helpful. And then when it enters, I can either double the number of counters on it or it fights a creature I don't control. If there's something that I want to get rid of and I have enough power and toughness to put on this that it won't die, then I can use it for that. Um, or I could double it, and then I have ways to double it again, which gets really crazy. Um, I've I've dropped this down and paid, you know, like let's say X is four, and I'm paying six total mana for this thing. Then it would enter with four plus one plus one counters. And if I choose to double it, now all of a sudden it's got eight plus one plus one counters. And if I have one of my enchantments, which you'll see later, that doubles plus one counters, now it's got 16 plus one counters on it. So for six mana, I now have a 16, 16 plus a four, four Hydra from this guy. So, I mean, it just, it gets crazy so quickly. This is such a fun deck to play. All right, here's my first modal double face card, which is Glass Pool Mimic. And I can have it enter as a copy of a creature I control, except as a shapeshifter rogue. Uh, that can be beneficial for you know any one of these guys, um, depending on what they are. If it enters as a copy of a creature like Endless One that's just X, and it starts out as a zero zero, and then you put counters on it, for example, you know any of those types of creatures, when it enters, it's going to die because you're not going to get the plus one counters. But I can have it enter something else that's not a zero zero. Um, so pretty fun. And then on the back, it does have a land option, so good for ramp in case I need it that way. If not, then I can have a fun creature effect and double some things up and get some craziness going. Mana Gorge or Hydra is one of my favorite cards too. This card has to be dealt with or it becomes a threat very quickly. It does not have X in the spell or X in the, in the, in the mana value, but having trample and then having the fact of whenever a player casts a spell, a player, any player, yourself, your opponents, everybody, you put a plus one counter on Mana Gorge or Hydra. So if each of your opponents only casts one spell, in a turn around the table a piece this has still had three plus one plus encounters added on it by the time it gets back around to you and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and if they're casting multiple spells in a turn this guy gets really big really quickly so your opponents have to deal with this when it hits the board or else they know it's going to get out of control it's a fun card Orin reef ooze again no x synergy but does have plus one counter synergy and it helps other creatures that have plus one counters which as you can see i have a lot of in this deck when it attacks, put a plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one counter on it. So gets a bunch of things bigger. Really fun. Stump Squall Hydra does have three green, but then X to, to do it. So if you, you know, this might be a little bit more of a mid to late game spell, depending on how much mana you've built up. 
but you can distribute X plus one counters among it and any number of commanders. So sometimes this commander, I mean, it's only a two, three. It is nice if you can get it to be a little bit bigger so it can uh, avoid, you know, maybe be like a, a better blocker because even though it does have death touch, it still might die to some things because it only has three toughness, but if you can make it bigger, all the better. So this can help with that scenario. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Got a foil version of it here from the, I think this was from the Arena Starter Kit from a year or two ago. Had the foil version. Um, this one also not, this one might be one I might consider cutting if I did find something else to replace it with, but it is pretty powerful, especially if you get into late game situation where you're losing life from just normal effects happening in the game. I mean, it's commander, you, you, you lose life usually. Um, and this isn't specifically a life gain deck. However, if I've got the mana, I can pay that, that ability and activate it. And then creatures I control gain lifelink until end of turn. I swing out with even one of my big hydras that can get me back a lot of life quickly. So, and then also as I gain that life, that opponent will lose that life. So this is only gonna be valuable if I have enough mana to also pay for that activated ability typically. Uh, but if, if so, it can really help me out. Longshot squad. So this one I have debated taking out and putting back in again, but I've kept it in because it's actually won me some games. It gives me the ability that each creature I control with a plus one counter on it has reach. And that is really valuable if I'm playing against a deck with a lot of flyers. So it could be a card that I might potentially, you know, slide in if I know that I'm playing something with flyers and maybe not play it if I'm not playing against a flyer heavy deck. It could go either way, but I kept it in here because I have actually stayed alive in a game because of this card specifically. A Shia Soul of the Wild. Got the extended version here. That one was pulled from a collector booster. So really, really awesome card. Uh, it's a great card just on its own. And I love the artwork here too. It's it, it speaks for itself. This is a powerful card in Commander. And it just makes you ramp harder. Which ramping in a X spells deck is very important. I don't think I need to say anything more about this. You know how powerful this card can get. It can make everything a forest land. And it just tap for crazy mana and, it's, and it gets crazy and powerful itself so it's just yeah this card is explosive hero's bane not an x spell hydra but a hydra that enters with four plus one counters on it but i could pay to put plus one counters on it where x is its power so i could pay four and i'm automatically going to get four it's essentially kind of doubling it almost if, if you go that way unless there's other counters added to it so iron scale hydra if a creature would deal combat damage, Iron Scale Hydra, prevent that damage, put a plus one counter on Iron Scale Hydra. So not quite like the Hydra we saw earlier where it, you put that many plus one counters on it, but it does put at least one plus one counter on it. Um, so it will essentially keep you from, you know, having combat damage kill this thing. There's going to have to be like a spell that removes it potentially and or just kills it or exiles it or something. Otherwise, combat damage, you're going to be fine. It's just going to get bigger and it's going to survive. So pretty cool. Seedborn Muse, very powerful card. You get to untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step, which can be very helpful if I'm trying to, you know, hold on to some instants or something that I want to react to on my opponent's turns. And when I'm done with my turn, I can swing out and then I can have my stuff back up, essentially kind of giving me vigilance. And yeah, I have to at least wait through my, uh, my up first opponent's turn before I can untap and do this. But this is a really powerful card, especially in a spell where I want to be able to use a lot of mana to do a lot of things. The big boy, Vorinclex. Here we go. This card, again, speaks for itself. I don't need to go over it, but essentially it's going to double those counters. Uh, it's one of the ways that I can double counters. It can also have a really nice effect of having any counters that my opponents might have, so it can shut down certain strategies that they have as well. Uh, Trample, Haste, this card does it all, and it's perfect in a deck with plus one counters to double that stuff. It's just so good. It's going to double all my Hydras that get brought in from Zexar as well. It's, it's just so good. Coma, another really awesome, powerful card. This card ends so many games in Commander. If you don't deal with it or have a way to deal with it quickly, or it's just, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. It can't be countered. And at the beginning of each upkeep, you're creating those 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature tokens named Coma's Coil. You can sack one and either tap a target permanent, and its activated abilities can't be activated, or it can gain indestructible until end of turn. I mean, I've used that, that first ability, the first option I've used to shut down Planeswalkers, even though technically tapping the Planeswalker does nothing, the activated abilities can't be activated this turn. That's huge. You can protect itself. Um, if you can wait a couple turns, then you can build up enough Serpents that you could just sack them all and tap your opponents out. And then they can't protect themselves. So that's, you know, there's so many ways you could be overpowered with this card. It's so good. And it's 
each upkeep, not just your upkeep, but each upkeep. So by the time this goes around the board, you've got, you're getting four, three, three blue servant creature tokens every time. Really powerful. Nyx Bloom Ancient. Enough said, right? Tap a permanent for mana, produces three times as much of that mana instead. Really helpful for an X deck. This almost gets nuked instantly every time I play it. It's so powerful. Everybody knows it. And our last creature in here is, again, a really powerful one. If you've got a lot of mana and nothing to do with it, Ulamog is here to help you. He's ready to go. 10 mana. When you cast him, you get to exile two target permanents, so you can get rid of a bunch of good stuff. He's indestructible himself, and when he attacks, the defending player exiles the top 20 cards of his or her library. Uh, in like a, you know, like a different format where you have a smaller library, that's lethal very quickly. In Commander, it still hurts a lot, and depending on how late in the game you are, it can end games within a couple turns if it doesn't get dealt with. So this is just a super huge threat that absolutely has to be dealt with. And even if it does get dealt with, you've still got a bunch of other awesome stuff going on over here. So this, this deck is really fun. All right, let's look at the two Planeswalkers I have in the deck. This is an X-Spell Planeswalker that works in my commander's color identity. Enough said. I can get a Hydra with it. I get some scrying action going on. Uh, you know, a couple other options, but really it's in here because of that. The other Planeswalker I have is Garrick. He does have some synergy, um, but he's not incredibly synergistic with the rest of it. I might cut him if I needed to. However, th keep in mind, Vorinclex also works with, with uh, Planeswalkers. So if I were to cast him out, he would automatically come onto the field when, when Vorinclex is out. He would come onto the field with eight loyalty counters. I can instantly ult him and get that emblem to, you know, get a, a creature card at the beginning of my end step and put it onto the battlefield. I don't want to put a, an X spell that has, you know, like zero, zero toughness that would have counters added to it because I'm putting it onto the battlefield. I'm not casting it. So that would come and then just instantly die. But as you can see, there's plenty of other really powerful cards that you can put on the battlefield that are going to be awesome with, with that ability if you can ult him. So, yep, that's it. So now let's take a look at the spells so the sorceries and instants and then artifacts and enchantments all right so our first one up is animus awakening which is an x spell so good hydra synergy there with zexara being out i get to reveal cards from my library and put land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped the rest is on the bottom of my library in a random order and i can untap those lands if i have two or more instants or sorceries so pretty good ramp spell right there with the x synergy very important full flowering Populate X times, and populate, if you're not sure, uh, is to create a token that's a copy of a creature token you control. What do we have a lot of in this deck? Creature tokens, especially Hydras, and we've got some Thopters, we've got all kinds of, you know, options for creature tokens. We've got insects and plants from some of those earlier cards, but I can create a, a token that's a copy of it, and I get to do it X times. So if you've got a lot of mana, this can get really powerful really quickly, especially if uh, you, you've got some, you know, pretty pretty fun things. Now, the, the one thing to note is that your, your Hydra tokens, you don't want to copy those because they're going to just hit the battlefield, not with the copies of the plus one counters on them. They're going to, you can't copy a creature with counters too. It's just a zero, zero creature. The counters are added when you have an effect that does so, like Zexara's ability. So if you put that down on the battlefield, um, you're, you're, you're not going to want to, you know, use that. You want to use it on another type of creature token. But you're at the very least going to be creating another Hydra token just with Sexar's ability from the X in this spell anyway. So, synergy. Yay. <laughs> All right. Vastwood Fortification, modal double face card, put a plus one counter on a creature. Again, helpful if you're trying to get counters on creatures that don't have them or just make something bigger if you need it. And then it does have a land on the back. Um, I do have, you know, because these are double-sided, so obviously I'm not going to play this in the deck like this because it would look like this if I'm shuffling, and then you get to it and everybody would know what card that is. Um, I do use these um, at the back here, these proxies that come in, in the decks, in, in your booster packs. So that's what I use, and I'm actually sleeving those up, and I've got these set to the side. And when I draw the correct proxy, then I'll, you know, use my card. That's how I, how I do that. But let me know what you think. I actually have a video um, about that, too. So let me know. All right, Biomass Mutation X and either green, green, or blue, blue, or green, blue, or blue, green, or however you want to do it. You got a lot of options, but it's an X spell, and creatures you control have base power and toughness X, X until end of turn. With a lot of mana, that can get really awesome really quickly, and you're creating a Hydra. So, there you go. Counterspell, nothing more to be said. Powerful card. Really good card. Have to have it. All right, Double Major. 
This one is fun. Copy a target creature spell you control, except it isn't legendary if that spell is legendary. Now, normally with Zexara, which again, I have a lot of legendary creatures, not just my commander, but normally with Zexara, you know, if you were to find a way to copy this, as soon as it hits the battlefield again, one of the two copies has to die because you can't have two legendary creatures on the battlefield at the same time. That's just how it works, right? But this one will allow you to essentially have two copies of Zexara. So I, if I do get that out, and I cast an X spell, I'm going to get two Hydras every time, plus whatever the value is of the card that I that I just did, whatever that brings to the table. So this can get pretty awesome really quickly, or I could copy something else if I needed to and keep them both on the battlefield, get some double effects of some cool stuff. Now, one thing to note is commander damage. So commander damage from a copy of a commander will not count. There is no such thing. There's only commander damage from your original commander. So um, also helpful to note, if you do have a creature that doesn't allow it to stay, like like if you have an effect that doesn't allow it to stay on the battlefield like Double Major, and you're just copying it, you're going to want to keep your commander around and let the token die in most scenarios, because if, if you care about commander damage at all, because you're not going to get any commander damage from swinging out with that token copy. It's still going to do everything else, but commander damage will not apply, so just a note. All right, so yeah, that's Double Major. Fun card from Strixhaven. I was really excited to pull that card because I thought you could have some pretty fun shenanigans with that. I can't wait to uh, see how that turns out in some of the decks. I haven't drawn that card in this build yet, so it'll be fun to see if I can draw it and see what I can do. Fascination, I can either get some card draw or put cards from my library into my graveyard if I want to. Usually I'm just going to be you know, drawing that card. Um, I do have a couple ways to get some things back, but usually I'm going to want to draw those cards. And I make a Hydra, right? So it's great. Mindspring, same thing. Draw X cards. There you go. Nothing more to be said. Open into wonder. X target creatures can't be blocked this turn. And until end of turn, those creatures gain. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So again, card draw spell plus also swinging out, getting some damage into my opponents and making a Hydra with Zexara out. Have you, have you caught the theme here yet? This is what this is all about. All right, Profane Command is a fun X spell with a lot of options. You get to choose any two. So depending on what's going on in your game, this could be really helpful. You could have a player lose life. You could return a creature card with CMC X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Not in your hand, but straight to the battlefield. You could give a creature minus X minus X. Or you could have up to X target creatures gain fear until end of turn, which means they can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or black creatures. So depending on what your opponents have, depending on what scenario the game's in, this can be a really helpful, very good utility card. And you get a Hydra with it because it's an X spell. Strength of the Tajuru also. Hydra Synergy, and it has multi-kicker. You may pay an additional one any number of times as you cast this spell. And that's different from paying, you know, X as a higher value. But choose target creature, then choose another target creature for each time this spell is kicked. Put X plus one plus encounters on each of them. A lot of ways you could use this card, depending on how much mana you have, depending on what your board state looks like, and you're going to get a Hydra from it too because it's an X spell. Agadim's Awakening. This is one of those ways that I can get stuff back if something really awesome dies and I need to bring it back um, alternatively, this is a way to avoid commander tax. So if you, you know, like, let's say someone takes out Zexara, rather than put it into the command zone and have to pay that extra two the next time to, to cast it, I can put it in the battlefield if I know I have this in my hand, and I could return from my graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost, X or less. So if I'm going to pay, you know, I need it, that's a four CMC if I want to get that back. I need to have at least, you know, I'm paying seven into this. So it's up to you whether, you know, if it's not, maybe if it's your first time with it dying, it's still probably, it's cheaper. It's only going to cost you six mana to bring back. But if it's, you know, the second or third time it's died and it's one of those kind of games, this can really help you because it'll get it back to you um, much, much more quickly onto the battlefield. And then, of course, on the back, it's got the land option, which you can pay through life. If you don't, it enters tapped. So fun card, modal double faced. There's Guardianship. What more can I say? This has to be in any deck that's blue um, if you have it. This is really expensive to acquire on its own. I bought it from the Precon back when the Precon was less cost than what the value of this card is now. It's I knew it was going to be a powerful card, and it still is. It's just the value is holding. It's it's phenomenal. It's a free counter spell if you have your commander out. And even if not, it's still a three mana for a counter spell, which in a pinch can still help you. Um, but it's it's pretty good. It's a non-creature spell, so it can't counter just any spell. So there is that little bit of limitation there. But still, this is a phenomenally powerful card. Gaze of Granite. So this is an X spell. Destroy each non-land permanent with CMC X or less. So this is going to hit your own stuff. It's also, no matter how low X is, it's going to hit all of your tokens and your hydras. So 
beware of that because your hydras are zero cmc when you get those tokens out onto the field um, it's going to hit all those it's going to hit a lot of your you know artifacts and anything but depending on the scenario board wipes are you know important you need them in commander and this one's here and it gives you a hydra as well so pretty good um pretty good synergy again overall can't complain ingenious mastery this one was uh you can see the little symbol there this one was my pre-release uh, card, one of my pre-release cards from the Strixhaven. So fun that I've got that in this deck, and it's a little shiny, got a little stamp on there, and it's an X spell. Um, you can pay two and a blue rather than pay the spell's mana cost, and if so, then your opponent gets some value, but otherwise, I'm, I'm not going to want to do that because, again, this is an X spells matters deck, so I'm going to pay that X value, and I get to draw X cards. Invigorating Surge. This is a fun card. Not an X spell, but again, there's a picture of a Hydra on this. I mean, what more do you want? It's got all this energy you need. Plus one counters synergy like crazy. Put a plus one counter on a creature you control, then double the number of plus one counters on that creature. And again, if you've got something on the field that's going to double counters as well, like Born Clax or some of these enchantments I'm about to show you, double that and then quadruple that essentially it's it's phenomenal there's so many good options for some crazy combos in this in this deck it's it's a blast connie ambush is a mobile double face card i've gotten here and this can be helpful if there's an annoying creature that you just need to get rid of quickly you can have a target creature you control fight a target creature you don't control and it's a land also so this one is probably one of the other ones that i might cut sooner rather than later if i do find something else i need to put in but it's still helpful and i've, I've used it in, in a game before it can be very helpful villainous wealth is such a good card i've won a game with drawing this card late game this is just phenomenal um, this is uh, x spell and target opponent exiles the top X cards of their library. So I'm getting a Hydra, ex opponent's exiling cards from the library, and I get to cast any number of spells with converted mana cost X or less from among them without paying their mana cost. So you gotta figure most people's decks have, you know, some higher spells, sure, but the majority of their spells are probably gonna be seven, six, probably five mana or less, somewhere in that range for, for most of them. And if you have enough to make X be worth that, you're going to potentially get some pretty good stuff. If you can hit right, you can of course whiff with this, but even if you whiff, you've created a Hydra with that X in there. So really good backup synergy in case. Um, but again, depending on what you flip, I, I won a game just because I flipped a black market from one of my opponents and came onto my battlefield and just ramped me even more. And it worked with my color and it just, it was great. So this is a, this is an awesome, awesome card. Deadly Relic, similar to Fierce Guardianship, part of that C20, um, you know, free commander spell uh, series whatever you want to call that if you have a commander on the battlefield you can basically cast this for free and you get to exile a target creature so tar single target removal for free if my commander's out i'll take it sublime epiphany is so powerful this is such a good card i've got the planeswalker stamp little promo version here too um choose one or more <laughs> or more it's so good you could literally choose all of these if you're in a situation where all of these apply um, usually they're not going to all apply but you're still going to get really good value if you're choosing you know multiples at all here counter target spell counter target activated or triggered ability return a target non-land permanent to its owner's hand create a token that's a copy of a target creature you control good synergy there or target player draws a card all of this is phenomenally useful depending on the situation that you're in. This is this card is just too good to not include. Even though it doesn't have X in the spell, it's too good. It's 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 so good. All right, emergent ultimatum. This card is fun. This is a uh, this has been uh, in the in the former standard which we just rotated out of recently here. Uh, but in 2021 standard, this card was so powerful, and it's also pretty powerful in this deck because it allows you to just go and get your best stuff basically. Um, it's again, not an X spell, but very powerful spell. If you've got the mana and you just want to hopefully try to get that game winner that's in your deck in the right scenario, and you know what you need, you use this card and you get to get three monocolored cards with different names and exile them. And an opponent chooses one of them, shuffle that card into your library. You can cast the other cards without paying their mana cost. So you get two of your three for free. You're kind of trying to play a little bit of a mind game to guess what your opponent might you know, to put in your library and you're going to try and guess what they might let you have for free, but they have to let you have two of the three things. So if you choose three absolute bombs, your opponent's going to have to give you at least two of those. So it, this, this card is awesome. All right, on to artifacts. We've got Soul Ring. Self-explanatory. Every deck has it, right? It's, it's to that point. Now here's the Ozolith, which I talked about earlier. 
this card is really awesome when you get those plus one plus one counter creatures out there if you start making hydras all your hydras technically are not you know like let's say I have a five five hydra it's not really a five five hydra it's a zero zero hydra with five plus one plus one counters on it and if that hydra dies those plus one plus one counters go away unless you've got the ozolith on the battlefield they get to get put onto the ozolith if that creature dies and at the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you can move all of those onto a target creature. That in and of itself is really good and synergistic with this deck, but when you combine it with some of the doubling counter synergy, the Ozolith is essentially a counter factory then for you. So if that 5-5 five, five Hydra dies, my 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters go on it. If I've got something on the battlefield that's going to double counters when they're placed on a creature, at the start of combat, I'm placing those 5 counters on my creature. Now all of a sudden, it's 10 counters. And this thing costs 1 mana. This, this this is so good. This is such a good, powerful card. I love this card. It's cool artwork. Everything about it is awesome. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Arcane Signet. Again, a, a staple of commander decks. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Helpful sometimes if you're not drawing the right colors. You just got to get it. Lightning Greaves is in here specifically for Zexara for the most part because as you can see, you know, it, it really kind of like when that card's gone, the, the deck loses a lot of its power. And so if your opponents have single target removal, then that can be not very fun for you. So I had to put something in here that would give it a little bit more protection and it'll give it haste and shroud, which again, you know, it's, it's, it can be a target of spells or abilities, including my own, but it's going to keep it from getting single target removal, just kind of taken out of there, which is nice. It's not going to protect against a board wipe, but it'll protect against those single target removal. So depending on the game you're in, this might be a lifesaver for you. I could probably use a little bit more protection like that in this deck. Um, if I if I were being honest of what I might, you know, change and upgrade here, but that's at least something that's going to get me some protection there. All right, Elementalist Palette is my final artifact here. Whenever I cast a spell, this has got that X synergy, so there's no X in the cost, but it does have X spell synergy. Whenever I cast a spell with X and it's mana cost, I get to put two charge counters on it, and that ramps me. And then I could, um, you know, also spend it on specifically cards that, you know, have X mana cost so really good really cool artwork too very colorful i love arts are uh, cards with go colorful art and it's extended too so really nice fun card all right on to enchantments hardened scales this is a card i've had for a long time i've long loved this card this is back from cons of tarkir and this is uh really good for this type of deck because if one or more plus one counters get placed on a creature i control that many plus one, plus one, plus one counters are placed on it instead. So it's not doubling it or anything. If I'm putting three plus one counters on a creature, now I'm putting four. If I'm putting six plus one counters on a creature, now I'm putting seven. So that can be fun, but in, when it's there with that those doubling effects, then it's essentially you're putting that many plus two because you're adding that as a plus one and that instance gets doubled again. So it's, it's fun. This gets really fun. There's a lot of math in this deck, if you can't tell, which is a problem for me because math is sometimes a challenge. But, you know, it's it's what I signed up for with this deck. Simic Ascendancy, I can put a plus one counter on a creature, which is really nice. And whenever a plus one counter is put on a creature, I can put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. And at the beginning of my upkeep, if, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. So this is an alternate win con. And again, you know, you might think it might take a while to get to 20, but if you've got some of those doubling effects out there, it's not going to take that long. And um, your growth counters are also like, let's say Vorinclex, right? Vorinclex doubles counters of any kind, including growth counters. That's going to count on here too, a Simic Ascendancy. So this can get you to a win pretty quickly if you're in the right board state. So pretty awesome. Branching Evolution. This is a card that is very important for this deck if you can get it out because if one or more plus one plus one counters will be put on a creature, twice that many plus one counters are put on that creature instead, uh, creatures that you control. So that's one of the pieces that I've been alluding to all deck long. This just really ramps up everything with this deck. So all of a sudden I've played like a, an, a spell where X equals four and now I'm putting eight counters on my hydras that are coming out because of that rather than just my four so really really powerful hydra's growth is a uh, similar but it's also kind of a, a single target version essentially because i can enchant a creature it's an aura when it enters the battlefield i do put a plus one counter on that creature and then at the beginning of my upkeep i get to double the number of plus one counters on that creature so they either have to deal with your opponents have to deal with this enchantment or deal with just that creature in general uh, i've had hydra's growth and my lightning greaves on zaxara to protect it um, after I put Hydra's Growth on it first, and then it was just like, it just kept getting bigger and bigger each turn, which is really fun, so good synergy there, and that is a foil, if you couldn't tell. I know the, it's kind of a matte, have matte sleeves, but that's a foil on there as well. 
Primal Empathy, which is an enchantment, and at the beginning of my upkeep, draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Kind of likely you might have that in, in a lot of board states because you're making big hydras. Otherwise, you get to put a plus one counter on a creature you control. So either way, you're going to get card draw or plus one counters added. Very helpful. Retreat to Kazandu. Landfall. So whenever land enters the battlefield under control, you can put a plus one counter or gain two life, which you most likely won't be doing unless you just need it. But it's an option, so you got choices there either way. Good old Ristic Study. So whenever an opponent draw or casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player plays player pays one. I can talk. It's okay. This has been a long video. If you're watching this video by this point, by the way, make sure you pay one for Ristic Study and hit that like button. So I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, answer me in the comments. Would you like to pay the one for Ristic Study? I have to know. So please tell me in the comments below what your answer is, because I'm going to be asking it a lot with that card in this deck. This is a very good card that gets you some card draw, which can be really helpful. It's it's good in any blue deck, so it has to be in here, was, was my opinion. All right, on to the big daddy. The enchantment of all the enchantments that really helps turn everything on and just gets crazy, crazy here. Unbound Flourishing. When you cast a permanent spell with a mana cost that contains X, double the value of X. And when you cast an instant or sorcery spell or activate an ability, if that spell's mana cost or the ability activation cost contains X, copy that spell or ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. So all my X spells, I get to copy. All of my X values, it gets doubled if it's a permanent spell. So if I'm casting X equals 4, now X equals 8. And then I'm going to allow X equaling 8 to then give me 8 plus 1 plus 1 counters on something. So I've only paid four, but now I'm getting plus one counters times eight. And then if I've got any other things out that double my counters, now it's 16. So that's how you can see this gets really crazy. And this can be part of a huge combo piece to get things out of control very quickly. Really, really awesome, powerful, powerful card. And last two enchantments. Wilderness Reclamation at the beginning of your end step. Untap all lands you control. Again, good for ramp. And Black Market, which is whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on Black Market. And at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black to your mana pool for each charge counter on Black Market. I mentioned this card earlier, but I actually got this from Villainous Wealth from one of my opponent's decks. And I thought this worked so well synergistically in my deck that I had to add it to my own deck. So here it is. Good ramp option. All right, let's talk about lands, the land base. All right, so I did look at, you know, how many of each type of land I have in here and tried to make it similar with the, the colors to, to balance it out a little bit, but I do have some modal double-faced lands in here, Bark Channel Pathway and Tide Channel Pathway, of course. My foil, this is a really fun foil, full art, clear water pathway and murk water pathway. Command Tower, of course, and foil. I mean, I had to, you, this is my pet deck, right? You got to add all the blingy lands and everything like that that's fun in here that you can. You know, I mean, when else are you going to do it, right? So, anybody have a pet deck? Tell me in the comments, too, what your pet deck is. I'd love to hear about it. All right, Coral Atoll. It enters tapped, but when it enters, you can sacrifice it unless you return an untapped island control to its owner's hand, and then you can tap it for two, essentially, a colorless on a blue. So you get some good ramp there. Dark Water Catacombs. Again, all these are kind of ramp-focused, essentially. Dumer Aqueduct. Exotic Orchard. Temporary setbacks, but long-term gains, right? To get that, that overall higher mana value on the field. Um, I've got all my fun little full art forests here. Let's go through all these quickly. These are basic full art forest lands. Battle for Zendikar, Zendikar Rising. A lot of fun stuff in here. I love lands and I love art, so I had to do that. Golgari Rot Farm. Again, some green black ramp. Foil Island Full Art. That is such a cool card. This is it's a really nice basic land. And this one as well. <laughs> I just so got so lucky I opened both of those in a booster pack one time. Really cool. All right, Jungle Basin. More ramp. Lotus Field. Awesome ramp. Hexproof. When, and, and it enters tapped, but when it enters, you sacrifice two lands, but then you can use this to add three mana of any one color. So really good ramp option. Memorial to Folly. If you want to, you can sacrifice it and return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So another way to get stuff back, which is really nice. Mortuary Mire. Again, very similar. When it enters, I can put a target creature card from a graveyard on top of my library. So it takes a little bit longer, but I can get stuff back with that one too. Moss Warp Bridge has Hideaway which it enters the battlefield tapped, and when it does, I look at the top four cards of my library. I exile one face down, then put the rest on bottom of my library. I can play that exiled card without paying its mana cost if creatures I control have total power 10 or greater, which is really nice. Opal Palace. 
get some color fixing mana from your commander's color identity and if you spend it to cast your commander this is an extra bonus then you're it enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game so this is a land you want to tap to play to play your commander out especially if it's your commander tax kind of tap uh, uh castings of that commander this is going to really help you opulent palace three color land source or in reef the vastwood Got some plus one counter synergy. I can tap and put that on uh, each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn. So depending on how you sort that, that could be helpful. Reliquary Tower, you have no maximum hand size. I do have some X draw card spells. So if I have this out, that's going to really help in that scenario so that I don't have to discard a bunch of stuff. Rogue's Passage can make a creature unblockable. Can be really helpful, especially if you're trying to get commander damage in to swing, you know, for, for something or just any scenario, any number of scenarios. That's a helpful card. Rupture Spire. Simic Growth Chamber. Sunken Hollow. I got my full art basic swamp. Again, just one because I do have some ways to, to find these and, and tutor for these. So I've just put one of each in here. Speaking of Verdant Catacombs, I've got in here, I've got that fetch land so I can get a swamp or a forest card depending on if I need it for my mana fixing and put it on the battlefield. Shuffle. And that's it. So and then I've got my, uh, you know, proxy cards here, which I can um, I don't actually write on them. I put little slips of paper inside there so I can know what each card is, but you, you know, however you want to do it. But that's the, that's the deck. That's the deck tech. So that's my take on Zexara the Exemplary. X plus one equals Hydras. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments what you think. I'll have the deck list down there too. Um, like I mentioned, the link to it so you can see it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, I'll put the deck list as is in the in the actual comments of the video, and then I'll put a link to where I hold my my actual deck on MTG Goldfish, and I update that you know as I find new cards and add and remove stuff to it. So that'll be the live version of this deck if you want to see if there's any updates that have been put on it. But let me know what you think. Um, tell me what your pet deck is in the deck. This is my pet deck. I have so much fun with it. There's so many ways to have fun with it. It really fits my play style. I love it. Uh, every, you know, everybody has their own types of decks that they like, and I've been wanting to build a deck like this for a long time, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out and how, you know, I've gone through many versions of this. This, this did not take uh, a short amount of time, and it's still going to continue to be evolved. I mean, that's how decks work, right? But that's the fun part about Magic is making and building and refiguring and just playing your decks and having fun with them. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.